Hey guys, welcome back to another week of Looking Beyond the Dividend. This week, we're going to travel to Calgary, Alberta, and we're going to look at one of Canada's best monthly paying dividend utility stocks. That's Transalta Renewables. Transalta Renewables has been paying its shareholders monthly for the last number of years. And until recently, things were going along quite well. Unfortunately, some issues happened in December, January 2021, 2022, and their share price has taken a real tumble because of that, among other things. So what's in the future for this company? Stick around. Let's check it out. So as I mentioned in the opening, Transalta is a utility company. And most of us understand and realize that really utilities come down to two points mainly. Lock in as many contracts as you can to provide those services and keep your costs down. Behind me on the screen, you'll see the financial results for the fourth quarter of 2022 and the full year results for 2022 for Transalta Renewables. And I just want to touch on a couple of points there, because when you look at these numbers, you might wonder what the heck is going on and why is this stock, uh, has it dropped so much in price and seem to be almost floundering? A 27% increase in adjusted EBITDA over a period of 2021, that was the result in 2022, and free cash flow uh, earnings per share increased 64% on a per share basis. Uh, and down below, when you look at the other business and ESG highlights, um, they've announced over 200 megawatts of renewable growth projects and a number of different items listed there. So they've got some projects in the pipeline. They've got everything kind of going for them, it seems, and yet they seem to be struggling with their share price. So what's that all about? Well, the biggest portion of Transalta Renewables earnings come from wind turbines and they have three turbines in what is known as Kent Hills in uh, New Brunswick, Canada. And in very late 2021, there was an issue at one of those three different sites in Kent Hills. And the bases of those wind turbines were found to be defective and cracking. And what that led to after they fully investigated everything going on is all 50 of the turbines at one center in that Kent Hills collection had to be shut down so that those bases could be repaired and brought back up for use. The news itself dropped the price a minimum, I believe, of about 10% immediately when it came out. But more importantly, it cost them millions of dollars to make those repairs. And just as importantly, they lost somewhere in the neighborhood, I've read, I believe, of $3.4 million per month of income coming in because those turbines were not active. So the combination of not having the income coming in, the cost it takes or is going to cost them to bring these back online, and as well as just the news itself, really sent the tailspin happening in their price drop. Now, from a dividend income investor's perspective, Transalta really kept the dividend stable and continued to pay it as it always had during this whole ordeal with Kent Hills. So that made folks like myself quite happy. However, what it did with that loss of income is it ballooned their payout ratio to 339% of profits over the fiscal year. And that's a problem for potential new investors when they look at something like that. And that's another red flag. And of course, draining down onto the share price. Now, there is some good news in all of this. They do believe, Transalta that is, they do believe that those turbines in Kent Hills should be back and functional sometime in 2023. And I don't have an update as to when. We're four months into the year now. So with that, they do believe then once they're up and running, the payout ratio on their dividend is still going to be high, but it's going to drop to around 130%. So moving forward, that's the uh, projections from the company. And it's a matter of whether or not we as investors are comfortable with that. So what happens moving forward now for Transalta Renewables? Well, welcome to investing. If you're like me, you see this as an opportunity. Otherwise, you might not see it like me, and you may be pessimistic on this stock. 
current rates of interest are still pretty high and Transalta Renewables being a utility, they do have debt. So that's an added expense as well. But looking at a website like simply Wall Street, I found it kind of interesting uh, when I look at the analysis of Transalta Renewables. And it was funny because under the risk portion of their discussion about Transalta, uh, it made a few comments that I, I actually had a little bit of a chuckle with. Um, the dividend of 7.5% is not well covered by earnings or cash flows. Well, yes, that is true, fully legitimate comment, but we just went over very good reason why that is. Uh, number two point in the risk analysis, that large one-off items impacted their financial results. Yes, again, true. And the last one was profit margins of 13.2% are lower than last year, which were 29.8%. Again, true. So if we look at those three items as the risk, and we did just discuss about the increase in business coming to them that they've already locked in, once those issues then are fixed, are we not in a good position for the company, given its history? And that's where I'm very, very bullish on this right now, and, and I do agree. Now, part of it might be my bias because I'm already in this stock, but other uh, analysts, at, well, analysts even at Simply Wall Street uh, and a number of analysts that I've looked at consider Transalta right now to be trading at 50.3% or somewhere in the neighborhood of all of them saying 50% below the estimated fair value of the stock. And on top of that, the earnings are forecast to grow 37% in the coming years. So the growth in earnings, again, is going to address those risks, uh, possibly, as well as the um, uh, fair value being, you know, at basically just around 50% of what fair value is right now. So for me, again, I've talked about my wife and I looking at stocks that give us income. And again, this is one of those lovely stocks that pays us every month. But at the same time, there is some value here where analysts are predicting that this stock is 50% less than what its fair market value is right now. That to me is, an, is screaming capital growth. As I always say, this has not been investing advice. I'm just giving you some information about stocks that I and my wife are into. And this is one that I'm a little bit excited about. As I always ask at the end of each video, if you've enjoyed this, would you please consider hitting that subscribe button? Lately, the subscriptions to the channel have been growing like crazy, and I really do appreciate everyone out there hanging out and spending some time with me. That's going to wrap it up for this week. Take care, and we'll talk to you soon.